Hi, I'm David Keenan. These are my five essential tracks. But it's all right, Ma. Isn't that smell of sweet perfume? I was once out for a life. Oh, so long. Each of the songs that I chose was like a, a bookmark in my development as a, as a human being. The first song that I chose is It's Alright Ma Money Bleeding by Bob Dylan. Darkness at the break of noon, shadows even the silver spoon, the handmade blade, the child's balloon, you know? You go into a room armed with just a pen and a piece of paper and try to write something like that, I mean, it's just, it's outrageous, you know? And if my thought dreams could be seen, they'd probably put my head in a guillotine. But it's all right, Ma. It's life and life only. When I first heard that song, a lot of my friends were listening to rap music at the time. And I was like, listen to this. This is better than any rap music. You know, the, just the lyrical... Uh, rhythm, you know, and the rapid fire of the lyrics. Um, incredible. So I think it's my favourite Bob Dylan track um, because of that, although it's impossible to choose, but it's just an incredible piece of work from a man who is just in his absolute prime, you know. For me, it's just about what the song does to you, if it moves me in a certain way, you know, if, and if it doesn't, then I can't find any resonance in it, I can't really relate to it. And Dylan has this kind of chant kind of wail in his voice that just it almost sets the tone for the song you know so um i think he's got a great voice he's like a witch doctor you know that's all i can describe it's, that's what reminds me of in that song he's like a witch doctor you know? i think if you want to be a you know a lyricist you have to study the greats and and he's a he's a he's you know the best i was introduced to him at a very early age and he just opened me up to that kind of world of imagination. Second track is Madame George by Van Morrison. Like I could have picked any track off Astral Weeks because it's such a just uh, incredible piece of work. Every time I listen to that record, I learn something new. I hear something new. It's such an educational album. Um, but it's that song, it's the imagery in that song. He talks about Freud, Fitzroy, and Madame George, and playing dominoes and drag. You're the cool night, you're like Shalimar. You're outside the making all the stops. A kid's out in the street collecting bottle tops. It's just, he creates this world in this song. Um, you know, you ask yourself questions, you want to find out who is Madame George, what's going on here, you know, it's just a beautiful story. And his voice as well is such a unique in instrument, like that saxophone kind of, um, you know, lilt that he has in his voice. So, but Madame George is just a, a beautiful song. And he also, in that song, he sings about his locality, Cypress Avenue, and he sings about where he, where he grew up, and uh, that really attracted me to it as well. Singing in his own accent as well. Vano was singing in his own, in his own accent. I thought that was great. Third track is "Son of a Gun" by the Laz. Um, again, I could have picked any track off that record because it was so important to me. It just opened up a totally different universe of this new sound, this kind of organic, rootsy sound that is uh, so uniquely. Kind of Liverpoolian. I just got obsessed with that band and that record, and I moved to Liverpool because of that, because of that band, and because of just the world that they pulled me into and they opened me up to like 4-3-2 four, three, four, three, tuning on the guitar and all these different things so it was just so fascinating I had to go I had to go to Liverpool I had to 
It's Sorry. an incredible album. And uh, yeah, that's one man I'd love to write a song with, Lee Mowers. A very important album for me in my makeup as, a, as an artist, yeah. So Long Marianne by Leonard Cohen. Again, I'm kind of going back to childhood with all these songs in a sense, but I was I was young when I when I first heard and you know the the shake and the rattle at the start of it, and then this invitation where Leonard says, you know, come over to the window, my little darling, I'd like to try and read your palm. He's just a master lyricist and, and a poet, a true poet, um, and just a, a beautiful soul, you know. And, and you can you can hear that in his music. And again, honesty. I think songwriting for me is all about honesty, brutal honesty. And um, whether you're in the pits of misery or whether you're just you know elated, you know. But if it if it's believable, that's the most important thing. There's no veneer, you know. So I try to achieve that in my own in my own songs. Just raw, honest, yeah, unadulterated kind of expression, you know. And uh, it's cathartic when you do it like that, I feel. It's medicinal. It's, it's, it's how I kind of process everything that, that, that happens in my life. Um, by, by putting it down on paper, it's my main form of, of expressing myself, you know. So, But aside from that, the writing process doesn't discriminate. It's it's ever changing, ever evolving, and um, you can just you know go on these uh, trips, you know, in your imagination and create th create different worlds and invite characters into these worlds and watch you know s see what happens, kind of thing. So that's that's the beauty of songwriting. My last track is "Psycho Killer" by Talking Heads. I added this track in because I mentioned that each one is like a bookmark, kind of my development or where I've been. And Psycho Killer is the song that kind of reminds me of my move to Dublin. became immersed in this new scene of, of bodies and they introduced me to Stop Making Sense. To, it's just, every song is just seeping with energy, you know, incredible. And uh, yeah, it really, it really hit me like a ton of bricks when I moved to Dublin and I, I got introduced to that record and that documentary. So I had to, I had to put it in. I have just recently done a couple of gigs with the band, with a band and incredible musicians around me band of brothers it's freeing because for me it gives me a kind of a a canvas you know to so the band is the canvas and then you know the lyrics and the and and my voice are kind of the paint you know and and that's my kind of my medium you know to get the songs across i can just express myself and go off on tangents and the band are there with me you know and they're, they're carrying this thing so like-minded souls have a habit of attracting each other, like magnets, you know. And I've met some people along the way that have just uh, passed things on to me, not by not through force, but just by their being, just by, you know, by their example. And you do meet these like-minded individuals who pass on little gems of, of aurum, of gold to you, you know. But um, I think from childhood... Just old, you know, Dubliners records that would have been playing around the house and Tim Buckley records and stuff like that. And so all these ghosts kind of just seep into you naturally, you know. But every day is a school day, you know, and I think as a songwriter you just have to open yourself up and, uh, you know, call all the bards in. It's ever-changing and that's the beauty of trying to make art, you know. It's, you can never... You can never, it's, it's, it's something that can never be mastered, you know. You're always seeking out new avenues of expression. So. Hey, thanks for watching this video. 
Um, I'd be interested to hear any comments you have on the artist that I just spoke about. What's your favourite Van Morrison record? Do you know the lads? If you don't, seek them out. And uh, yeah, get back to me. Thank you.